Okie dokie, hello, welcome back to another thrilling Pond Guru metal detecting video. On this video I'm on a new permission, but I dropped back onto an old permission so the footage is a little bit mixed up. Um, I've actually got a claim jumper on one of my old permissions. So I mixed up the footage with a new permission just to confuse him so he doesn't go around knocking, asking for permission on this new permission. Good. That should have made sense. Made sense to me. And it was quite a good day. The last time I went out, I found all modern coins, apart from one pre-decimal that was 1967 penny, so it was only just pre-decimal. This time, I think they were nearly all pre-decimal, and there was a little bit of silver as well, so look out for that. In this video, I'm using the E-Track with the 13-inch DTEC Ultimate Coil. It's a excellent coil great for pasture actually it's great for everything it just hasn't failed me at all it really brings the signals to your ears makes them very loud target separation is excellent and I absolutely love it it's great so I'm on a couple of different permissions here footage is a bit mixed up but there's some fairly good finds and I hope you enjoy it This one's reading as a lovely loud 1246 on the E-Track. There's definitely something in there. I've got an imprint of a coin. At least I hope it's a coin. <laughs> Where are we at? Yeah, what a start. Ah, judging by the thickness of it, I would say it's a Georgian half penny probably not going to get any sort of detail off that but I'm pretty sure that's what it is be George the third possibly George the second but I would say more than likely George the third half penny this one was reading a nice 1138 very strong signal I hope it's a, it's a penny 1917, so that one's George V. That's lovely. There's hardly any muck on it. Very sandy soil though. Nice one. Very good. And hopefully there'll be plenty more of those to come. This one's an extremely loud 1137, so that makes me think that it's a pre-decimal hairpenny. We shall see. I would like to think it is because I'm going to do a live dig and they normally don't go too well for me well it's in the top ah it is indeed a hairpenny very good the power of the e-track does it again whose is that one George can I even see a head on there I can read Georgius V1 George the sixth. So that'll be quite a late one. Oh, I can't find the date. Nope, there it is. 1946. Oh, this one's reading 946 or 948. So I'm pretty uh, excited about this one. It could be big silver. Or it could be the bottom end of a can or something. I'm going to take the risk and do a live dig again. Well, it's not silver. That's one thing. Hey, what's that? More than likely a Georgian coin. But it appears to have pretty good detail around there, so I'm not going to rub this one too hard. Looks like a George II hairpenny. Yes. That's in pretty good condition. The bust, the dude, is pointing that way. Aye! That's in pretty good condition, so I'm not going to damage that one by scrubbing it with my hands. But you can read Georgius I I. I. Nope, not George the Third. Just two eyes, I and I. George the Second. George the Second hairpenny in pretty good condition. Now this one was reading 1235, but it was jumping around a little bit, not only slightly up and down, but also left and right. 
and it looks like a ring in there. Unfortunately, not the right kind of ring, but one of a horsey sort of attachment. That was fairly deep, seven or eight inches or so. You have a hell of a signal. I'll do yet another live dig because this one's got potential. I've just had the little round ring from here, and this one here is reading 1040, which is in the top right hand portion of the screen on the E track. So that's always worth a dig. Curse of the live dig strikes again. Just a lump of bent copper. Ah, you'll notice I'm not using my big proper spade today. I've actually left that one outside my back door. I totally forgot about it. But luckily, I had this little lad in the van. Otherwise, I'd be digging with me hands. Now this was quite a bouncy signal, but it was very strong. It was kind of leaping around a little bit, but it was spending a lot of its time in the top right hand side of the screen. And in the bottom of there, which is quite a depth, looks like we've got a musket ball. Yeah, lovely big musket ball. Very good. That's, uh, how deep will that be? Oh, eight, nine inches. And that still gave a really good diggable signal, if you know what to listen and look for. A lot of people wouldn't have dug it because the signal was bouncing and the audio was changing. But that's a pretty good find. I'm pleased with that. This was given a humongous signal. Uh, it looks like a bangle of some sort. Possibly gold plated. But I think the actual main metal isn't anything useful. A quick look for hallmarks, just in case it's gold plated silver, but I've never heard of that before. Yeah, there's no marks on there. Which is a bit of a shame. This one's reading 1230. Uh, and, oh, I was just about to say it looks like we've got a little goldy button, but it's actually a sixpence. 1946. So it's just 50% silver. But because it's been under all these pine trees, it's black. That's George the Sixth, 1946, silver sixpence, or at least 50% silver sixpence. Now I am going to risk another live dig here. Sixpence was just in here. And there's another signal here, which is reading 1240. Tell a lie, it's 1243. Now forgive me if the editing's a little bit bad in this. My stupid camera keeps switching itself off. So I think I'm going to need a new one pretty soon. Ah, that one's a threepenny bit. Not silver, unfortunately. Um, that one's also a George the Sixth. There you go, there's George the Sixth. Yeah, what's that one? 1941. Now I've gone over this area again and there's yet another signal and it's another sixpence. Now for those of you who like to keep track of the readings that I give for various coins, that sixpence that had no silver in it at all still gave a good signal. But it's reading way down on this side of the screen. The silver one, right up here. And the full silver one would read a little bit further to the right. This one was reading 1214, and that is a shilling. Not a silver one, unfortunately, but it is Queen Elizabeth II. So that'll be 50s or 60s, I would imagine. Yeah, I can't even see the date on it. Don't believe it. I had to hack through concrete to get that. That's what I was hacking through, right under that. It most probably is about eight or nine inches down, but that's an Elizabeth II threepenny bit. Still a decent find, although I would have preferred not to hack through the concrete to get it. Back in another field now, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to disturb these lovely little mushrooms, or toadstools, or magic mushrooms.
This was reading 12.35. I'll go a little bit deeper. Hey, oh, I've got something. Now, is there a coin in here? Oh, get in, there is. Well, at least there's something coin-shaped, anyway. God. The blackness on that, it's as black as the night is long. It's a hapenny of some sort. It's a George V hapenny. It's in a hell of a state, so I'm not going to get a date off that, but it'll be early 1900s. Now here's another good signal. It's reading 12.38, so I'm thinking possibly Penny, old Penny. Well, on end at a good eight inches is a George V penny that I've hit with a spade. <laughs> Just glad it wasn't a silver one. <laughs> oh God, what's the date on that one? Uh, and that's 1915. Hopefully there'll be a few more in this field. It's a it's a field that I haven't done before. So. That's two out of three digs in about ten minutes. Might be pretty good. There you go, you can see where the penny was. Stuck in the side there. That's a canny old dip. You have a hell of a good signal as well. This one was reading a lovely loud 1042. And it's another penny. This time 1938. And that's George the Sixth. It's in fairly good condition, gave a hell of a signal. Mind you, it was only oh, five or six inches down, maybe. Hopefully there will be more. Next to ye olde fishing lake here. And although this has been very worn away and the, the land has encroached into the lake, um, there is a bank side along here. So I've been detecting for about five minutes along here. And I've got a signal down here that was reading 12.40. Uh -huh. And as I thought, I've got an old penny. Yeah, that one's George V, and it is 1928. This looks promising. This was a really tricky signal from ooh, probably a good 10 inches down. So I'm hoping it's a coin. Ah, it is a coin. It's a threepenny bit. From Elizabeth II. That was a hell of a depth. I almost didn't dig it. Well, this one was from, ooh, I don't know, seven, eight inches down. And it was reading 1239. So I'm kind of hoping it's another coin. There's definitely something in there. Yep, it's another halfpenny. This one's a ship half penny in 1958. That'll be Elizabeth II. Got quite a nice patina on it. Another very loud 1240. And it's another penny. What's this one? 1918 or 1913. 18, I think. Yep, 1918. Year the First World War broke out. And that one is George V. Yet another one, reading 12.38. And yet another penny. Get in there. That's got a beautiful patina on that one. And it's another 1918 penny, George V. Lovely. Dark green, that. Absolutely lovely. Look at the patina on that. Absolutely beautiful. Bit worn on that side, but this other side, the head side, is absolutely hellish. Nice one. Whoa, hey, another musket ball. This time a little one. And it wasn't very deep, that one. More or less just in the top two inches. And although it's small, it still gave a decent signal. I try and do the best I can, and it's great when people appreciate that. 
it's becoming more difficult because of the state of the camera and it sometimes moves out of focus and back in focus. Sometimes I've got to reshoot bits. Ah, bear with me, I'll get there. I'm really pleased that people enjoy the videos. If you've liked them and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Another little tip for you. Georgian coin, toasted. But you want to get a little bit of detail off it. Obviously you can wrap it in olive oil. But what I tend to do is just flick me light off my phone. Shadow it. And then you can pick up a bit of lettering and a bit of detail before you put it in your box of shame. Hi everybody, um, I have a great tip for you guys. Um, when you're in the field uh, and one and a half hours or an hour uh, away from your car, um, I usually get uh, thirsty or I would like something to eat. And um, I don't want to have a backpack with me to uh, uh, with all the things. Uh, so I bought something on eBay and it's the Condor water bottle pouch uh, with a little pouch in the front where you can have uh, uh, something to eat um, so let's do a small review first uh, so this is the water bottle pouch um, it's camo colored uh, army military uh, you can clip it onto your belt On the top side, you can see uh, the hole where the, the space where the bottle, water bottle in, uh, where, you, where you can put the water bottle. It has a, a hole underneath where, uh, yeah, fluid can come out um, if your water bottle breaks or something. Um, it keeps your cold drink cold and your hot drink hot. And in the front you have the you can put something to eat like some biscuits or something now i bought two of these and uh, this one i'm going to keep for myself but the other one um, i will give away uh, in a giveaway video which i'm releasing on the first of november um, I surpassed 750 subscribers and I also surpassed 100 uh, metal detecting videos. So uh, it's time for a giveaway video. Um, this will be, I think, at least one of the prizes you can win in my uh, giveaway video. So uh, um, please subscribe to my channel as well. And um, uh, like this video from, uh, from Ponguru. If you like, it um, would be much appreciated. So, um, thank you very much. Bye. Please subscribe to my channel. This one's reading 045 or 46, I think. No, tell a lie, what is it reading? The blackness on that, it's as black as the night is long. Forget that. This one was reading 12, th no, what was it reading? On this hunt, I'm using the De oh, am I using the Deos? What the hell am I using? On this hunt, I'm using the e track with a 13 inch D tech. That's a George the Sixth, so it's one of the later ones, and it's. Oh, hold on. 1928, that's George the Fifth. I never plan what I'm going to say or do, I just spit it straight off the top of my head. And sometimes my thoughts just get stuck mid-sentence and I have to cut it 
and redo that sentence. Woe is me, my camera is broken. Nice one.